REIT World 2011 in Dallas is in full swing, and I'm joined by Gil Mena, partner with Goodwin Proctor. Gil, going back to the start of the financial crisis, what would you say has been the biggest change in terms of the work that, that you do with REITs? Well, traditionally, we've always raised equity and debt capital for REITs. Um, but beginning in March of 2009, we saw the equity markets finally open up for REITs. Uh, so there's been a significant uh, change uh, from 2008 to the end of 2009 uh, with respect to the balance sheet of REITs. So we were involved in significant amount of equity raising, um, also some debt offerings. Um, for the REITs that are mature enough to be able to do non, non unsecured uh, debt, we were able to pre-fund some of the uh, maturities that were coming due. So that was a major change. Today, I think the market is uh, obviously closed uh, to new issues. Um, for seasoned and existing REITs, it's open. Um, but REITs don't have to raise too much equity capital unless there's a pending transaction because they've uh, right-sized their balance sheets on a relative basis from a crisis um, perspective to a post-crisis perspective. So I'd say um, that plus uh, ATM, at the market offerings and continuous equity offerings are gaining a lot of traction. Um, they're a relatively low cost of capital. They certainly don't replace a f uh, full-on equity offering, uh, underwritten e equity offering for a, or a bought deal for a REIT, but they've certainly t gained a lot of traction. And some REITs are, almost all REITs have ATM programs, mature REITs have ATM programs, and they're raising capital on a regular basis. That's actually causing their balance sheets on the right side of the balance sheets to uh, come down and uh, improving their debt to um, um, capitalization ratios. And are there any common impediments that, that, that are coming up uh, in terms of REIT's ability to get deals done? I noticed uh, listening to REIT.com, I listened to David Tordock um, talk about the $300 uh, billion of debt maturing, and he mentioned that REITs are very well positioned uh, to be the equity uh, takeout, um, again, because of the amount of equity that they've raised and right-sizing their balance sheets. So I think that they're incredibly well positioned. Um, very well positioned uh, right now to take advantage of whatever stress might exist in the marketplace. I think the interesting thing is when you talk about REITs and what their impediments are generally, I think the new issues are the, are the, are the harder uh, piece of the puzzle because it, the IPO market right now is closed. And there are a lot of companies that are in registration that deserve, in my judgment, to, to have access to the public equity markets and ha would be very competitive. Um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about um, we've heard in the press, w when's the next, you know, Avalon Bay coming to market or the next EQR. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, when all those companies went public, they were relatively small. Even Boston Properties in 1997, when it went public, was under $2 billion in size. That was a lot of money in 1997, and it was a big offering. It was the largest offering at that time. Um, I think it was the largest offering at that time in the history of the industry. We don't need to see those kind of offerings in order to have um, the access available for new issues in the REIT market. Um, there are viable companies in registration that should be able to access that market. Unfortunately, right now, it's, it's shut down. Gil, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks. My pleasure. For more from REIT World 2011, be sure to visit REIT.com. <laughs>